Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So one of the biggest questions I get asked is, when I, when I post pictures of war driving, is why? What can this information be used for? What can you do with this information? So today I want to quickly go over five different ways some of this information can be used. And we'll look into a, a little deeper into like a couple of the ways. But to get started, let's go over what Wiggle is again. So Wiggle is a central database shown here of all of the Wi-Fi's that anybody that is part of Wiggle has input to. So there are a billion, over a billion Wi-Fi er, networks, 14 billion observations, there were 512,000 found just today, 1 million or what sorry 1 billion 600 bluetooth devices and 20 million cell towers so this is a giant database and we're able to do a lot with it so what would somebody want with all of this info that can be found here So like here's just an example of all the different SSIDs that are found in this database and how many times they've been used. And I can tell you this is not a complete because there are many that only have been used once. But we'll get back to this in a little while. So what can people do with this data anyway? So first, this data can be used for network analysis. It can, as you can see, this is a, I don't know what city, but it's a big city. You can see that there's a ton of networks around. So you, you can see what channel they're using. So if something's overloaded, you can choose a different channel. You can see if there's any open Wi-Fi's in the area. And you can just see general idea of what the Wi-Fi congestion looks like in a specific area. The next thing it can be used for is for security research. It can be used by researchers to identify potential vulnerabilities in Wi-Fi networks. So if we go back over to the stats, we can see that the different securities that are used on the majority of these Wi-Fi devices. And you can look in a certain area and just filter them by those securities, whether they're open, and things like that. So we know that WEP is very insecure. WPA is a little secure, but still not secure. Two is the most common used now, but does have vulnerabilities. And WPA3 is the most secure of these Wi-Fi secu securities, the encryptions. <clears throat> so you can kind of just study all of that stuff about it you can if you're a pen tester you can use it to search an area possibly find open wi-fi's that maybe someone for the company you're pen testing for have connected to given you an end to their device if it was an open network uh, which would be a vulnerability test you can do protocol analysis you know checking all the different protocols and it can be used for just tool development in general. Another thing that this can be used for, and we'll get in, this will be the more meat of the video, is I, I want to show how it's possible to locate somebody using Wiggle. And I'll specifically use one of my war-driven <coughs> points. But it can be used for geolocation service. It can be used by mapping the location and signal strength of different Wi-Fi networks and makes it possible to be able to estimate the position of a device based on Wi-Fi networks it detects. So there's another tool specifically for Wiggle that I want to mention that has to do with geolocating and it's this Magic 8-Ball. It can help geolocate based off of the data that w Wiggle has. It pulls a light version of all of the Wiggles data and it helps geolocate from that data. So it might not be the most up-to-date, may not be the easiest way to do things, 
This is something I do plan to play with and will hopefully do a video on and would like to possibly even expand on the tool at some point. But it's a good starting place to kind of look at how geolocating works and, and we'll get a little more deeper into it in just a little bit too. The next thing it can be used for is urban planning. The data collected from Wiggle can provide insight into the wireless infrastructure of different areas, whether it be a city or just, you know, like a subdivision. And if this city or subdivision wants to put in their own, like, city Wi-Fi or free Wi-Fi or even Wi-Fi, you know, just for uh, employees or of the city or subdivision or whatever, then they can use the data from this to kind of see the best place to put access points, see... Uh, what channels they need to use because if you look over here you can see that we can see specifically the channels that are used and, and you can look at specific channels of the Wi-Fi in a specific area and then finally the fifth point that I, I have come up with that this data can be used for is the research and development the data on WiggleNet can be a valuable resource for academic researchers, engineers, developers who are working on wireless communication technologies. It can help them see different trends and identify areas for improvement, develop new wireless protocols. Uh, I, I believe the majority of everything on here is going to be 2.4 gigahertz, but we're going to have some decent 5 gigahertz information but now we even have a six gigahertz that you can get so let's just go pick a random wi-fi point and we can kind of see some of the information we get so we have the bs id the first time it was seen last time it was seen channel it was used wpa2 the quality of the signal and the specific address that it's thinks it's at i don't i can't say those are going to be like where the Wi-Fi is at, but that's kind of where the Wi-Fi was seen from. But going back to geolocation, what I want to do is I want to take, based off of just some wireless access points seen on a phone, take them and find where that device was located. Again, this is my own device, so I'm just this is a post I posted on uh, Instagram and TikTok, and, and you can see where it's at from here. And I know where it's at, so it'll be a little bit easier. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to take and look at these SSIDs. Most of the time, whenever you get somebody's Wi-Fi information, you're probably just going to have their SSID. If you have the MAC address, it makes things a lot easier, which I, I can show you that in just a minute. So what you want to do is, if you have a whole list of Wi-Fi's that a person can see, you can make it real easy. But if you don't have a whole list of Wi-Fi's you can see, and they have a new, unique Wi-Fi name, then you can just search it. So with this list, I want to find the most unique lane, name. So let's start with this Volton. And we're going to go over here to view. We're just going to do a basic search. And what you want to do is you want to zoom out. If you, if you know the specific area, like the specific state they might be in, you can just zoom out to where you only see that state. But let's say that we don't know where this is. So we'll zoom out to all of America. We know they're at least in America. And we will search Volten. And we get a handful of Wi-Fi addresses. So for this one SSID in America and Canada and the northern part of the Central and South America, we can see that there are only eight of Voltans. And it looks like most of them are either in on the Washington-Oregon border in Texas, 
Washington, Oregon. And see, these are probably all the same access point, just on different channels or just different times they were seen. It looks looks like the MAC addresses don't match, though, so it may be a different Wi-Fi access point. It may just be a different Wi-Fi card. So we know first that we're not looking for all caps. So that one's knocked out. But we do know we're looking for the lowercase, and those still exist in all of these areas. We have the one over here in New Hampshire. Okay, so we, we don't know exactly where they are from that one. So now remembering that there's one here, one somewhere here in South Texas, and one over here in New Hampshire, what we'll do is we'll go back and we will look at another Wi-Fi that's less common. So let's search Gomez Wi-Fi. This will probably be come up with quite a few. Well, you got to search it exactly how it was typed, which should be about like that. And obviously it comes up with a lot of them. But you notice most of those aren't located in the same spots as that first one was. So if we can just find one, oh, there we go. That's in the same spot as that infra, or a Voltaire. Then that's the one we can use. And it didn't look like any of the other ones, okay. So let's zoom into Texas now and see those, see if where those Gomez's were. There were these. So it looks like it's a new Braunfels. Yeah, so it was a new Braunfels. So let's go back and search that Voltaire, which we know was only in three locations. And looky there, the Volton is right there in that same spot. Let's zoom out and just see if there's t Voltons in all of Texas. We'll query again. Nope, it's only in that one spot. So it's safe to say that the device that we see this on, this one here, is located in this community right here. And look, it's pretty accurate as to where it was seen last. As I was war driving, that is the points where I was going through. And I, I can say this was the neighborhood I was going through. This is far enough away from a house I was comfortable show, sharing it. In fact, where I did live that was somewhat close to this, I have moved from, so I'm no longer even in that area anymore. But that's one simple way to find people based on their SSIDs. If you have a unique SSID or a very lightly used SSID, then you're going to be easy to find. So how can you protect from this? Well, one of the easiest things I can say to protect from this would to be choose would be to choose an SSID that is very popular. Which doesn't mean you have to, let's see, let's go back to stats. It doesn't mean you have to choose an SSID that, you know, like Xfinity Wi-Fi, Xfinity. You can find, you can use something that's a little more, you know, fun. Best practice would be to use one of these high ones. But one that should show up a lot. And we'll just do, actually we'll go to advanced search just so, I will do basic search so you can kind of see. We'll zoom out all of America again. And let's just search surveillance van. Look at how common surveillance van is. So obviously if you have surveillance van and you're in Montana and they know you live up in this area somewhere and you're the only one with it, then yeah. 
but for the most part, surveillance van is very well scattered throughout the United States. So it's probably one decently safe to use. However, as I've already stated, for the most secure, it would be best to use one of these top listed ones. Simply, I mean, look at Xfinity Wi-Fi. There are 19 million Xfinity Wi-Fi SSIDs found on Wiggle. That means it is very unlikely that if your Wi-Fi is named Xfinity Wi-Fi, that they will find you based on just that Wi-Fi. However, it is possible to search by MAC addresses. As we see when we go back to the search, we have the option to search by the BSSID or MAC address. And let's see if we can, let's just search for this Volton. It is 06. Ninety-three, ninety-seven, zero two, C two, thirteen. Okay, I think we need to be zoomed out for this. But let's query it. Oh, look. There was only one. So if somebody has the MAC address, they can locate you as long as their information has been found really quickly. So that's a quick rundown of how you can search or how someone could be searched for using the Wiggle database. There are a bunch of uses for this information, some good, some bad, just like everything else. Um, I would suggest follow me on Instagram if you want to try this out. Sometime in the future, I'm going to start posting random pictures of SSIDs around me. And we'll be giving away, you know, a sticker or something for the first person who can find my location based on those all, all of that Wi-Fi. Uh, some will be harder than others, some will be simple. You know, if I come across a super unique, funny, maybe I'll post that up. But definitely give me a follow on Instagram. I, I want to help get people started in, with no scent by doing this. I want to start no scent, and this is kind of one of the first things I've kind of got into on OSINT. So it's a good way to kind of start the search and figure out how different ways you may be able to search for somebody. In another video, maybe we'll go over other ways that you can find people's Wi-Fi that they've used to or Wi-Fi's that they've connected to. But for now, that's it. Um, thanks for tuning in. Subscribe, like. As I've mentioned in my last few videos, we're getting real close to that thousand. And at that thousand, we will be giving away a war driver. So if that if you're interested in war driving and you would like your own war driver, if you don't already have one, then get subscribed. It'll go to one of the thousand subscribers I have. I will post a video up sh shortly after I hit that thousand marks, most likely on a Tuesday or Friday after I hit that thousand mark of a how to put together a war driver yourself. But the one that I build in that video will be the one that is given away. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.